Oh, hold on, got a cool new meme here. When when uh when somebody asked me where the new video is, <laughs> uh, it's quite sad, really. So uh yeah, been away for a week. If you're wondering what I've been doing, it's uh it's playing a lot of CK3. Uh, don't ask me why I haven't recorded any of it. Uh, a lot of people did ask me uh, how exactly I'm finding the game, and to put it bluntly, here's my Steam review. Can't put it any better way than that, really. But, uh, yeah, uh, after my last video that went down an absolute treat and a half, I put in the idea into some people's heads that I'd do the same thing again, but with, uh, relatively compact people, as they like to be called. So, uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of games. Uh, this is the earliest start date in, uh, in Iceland. Uh, it actually starts as two different countries, but I just annexed the other one by invading them. And I had the great idea, if I'm going to do this Dwarven Kingdom, why not do it on an island that has to have an app to tell you if you're related to someone. Uh, so I, I've, I've already played a little bit, about 10 years of the game or so, and I haven't done much. In fact, uh, I stopped pretty early just because I wanted to film this video, obviously. And today we're gonna do something, which uh, we've already discussed, which is making a Dwarven Kingdom. So uh, whilst we are waiting for both more dwarves to appear in the world and actually become available for me to steal and practice a program of eugenics for the next 400 years, there is some other stuff we can be doing. Now, if you've played in the actual start date, the earliest one, which has all the Viking raids go on, you will already have noticed in CK3 that the world tends to end up looking pretty damn disgusting. So, uh, I think we're probably gonna hop on the old uh, Viking raiding situation, uh, mostly because these tribes seem to go absolutely crazy every single time and just take little blobs of land at just about everywhere. It gets pretty damn disgusting, but uh, the best thing about being Iceland is that we are only two provinces, so we don't really have to worry about any vassals or stuff like that. We can just sit on our little island and uh, inbreed. But uh, that's not the only thing we'll be doing. As many of you will know, um, there is a actual, um, well, very fun mechanic in CK3 where you can actually go ahead and form your own religion, which is a very good thing to do, very fun thing to do, and I'm sure as all your favorite YouTubers already done, you can do some wacky stuff with it. So, uh, the to-do list, steal a dwarf, uh, form a religion around dwarfism. Is that offensive? Hit the like if that's offensive! Alright, first things first, so not a lot we're gonna be doing. Now, we are of course a Viking, so we can go ahead and start raiding for gold, which uh, we might as well start doing, because we don't have a lot, and we, we want to build up Iceland as best of our ability, and maybe also kind of take some more land over here in hopefully Ireland or even the UK to try and get some extra range for, um, dwarf stealing. Uh, now at the moment we have our king, Jarl Grrrr of Iceland, and he is betrothed to a 13 year old. That's it, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> but we also have a pretty good heir. He doesn't have the best stats that we want. I kind of wanted someone with a bit higher martial so we could get some better levies. But uh, he does have 13 intrigue, which is actually going to help us out a whole bunch. Uh, so if you're new to CK3, you don't or haven't tried the raiding mechanic yet. Simply all you have to do is uh, land on a province you want to raid while your armies are actually raised as raiders and they will loot the province and then as you can see we have the amount of loot we can carry which uh, probably gonna be able to carry less when we are all tiny people but uh, for now 45 gold that's enough because we're only gonna raid around us so we can get back get the goal. So, uh, we've just been sitting here five speeding for a while now. Um, I'm on my new character now, as you can tell, because he's already lost an eyeball. But, he did just gain the trait, Reaver, which actually helps us with raiding quite a bit. So, we're gonna go ahead and start raiding again. Oh my god, yeah. He is, he is an absolute beast. He's got both Military Engineer and Reaver. So, we're gonna, we're gonna go have some fun down here in Ireland. Uh, although, it's, uh, it's already getting pretty complicated over here because that's definitely not Ireland, is it? And uh, we've actually got a pretty sizable levy force now, so we are absolutely decimating everyone we raid over here, as no one can really uh, stop us. There you go, successful plundering of Ireland, and uh, oh, oh, also just popped out a child, don't really care, and that's an extra 100 gold pieces in my pocket! Oh, I knew coming down to the Mediterranean would be good, look at that! I'm... <laughs> 
I'm capturing slaves in Palermo. Nice. God, yeah, even like the small independent guys down here, their problems are worth like 30 gold pieces. Don't mind if I do, everybody. Like, like free raids, I'm actually almost full already. Just another 90 gold pieces there. And I did realize that if we ever get the chance, we need to sack Constantinople because it's worth 117 gold. So, uh, yeah, let's get a bigger levy for, shall we? And would you lucky who just became available? It's a little dwarf fella with a very interesting political spectrum <laughs> but I also I also got a prisoner down there that's an extra 50 gold pieces we are having the time of our lives raiding uh, unfortunately though we are already 65 years old on this guy he was already quite old when we switched over to him but our new heir is 35 and oh god okay that's not the best All right with a funny number years old. That's right, 69. And we're putting together a squad to go hit and run Constantinople. Uh, I'm really hoping he actually manages to make it over to the Mediterranean and back before he dies. But let's give it a go. This, yeah, this is going to be your Viking funeral, all right? Oh, I actually, I can't raid Constantinople. Uh, I, I'll just have to raid everything around it then, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I'm not too sure why. Uh, oh, it's... Maybe it's because it's a barony? I think that might be why. I, I don't actually know. But it doesn't matter anyway. Just from looting these three, four provinces. I got 73 gold. So uh, I'll, I'll head back to Italy for my victory lap. God damn. I can't believe you're still alive. You've had, it's been a whole year at sea. And you've brought me back 132 gold. Thank you very much. If uh, you, you can die now, feel free. I don't know how you steal 70, I don't know how you're still alive. Oh my god, I can't believe we're going from the, the great pillager and raider, you know, 19 marshal with all of these sweet traits. Good old uni son, and then we're going to this guy. The drunk man who can't stop bleeding. Oh my god, really? No, I don't want this guy to die. <laughs> All right, if you're uh, if you're not gonna die, I'm just gonna have to help you along the way, my friend. Oh my God, they can't they can't even beat my army anymore. It's just a huge Viking raid party. It's brilliant. It's also led by a 73 year old one eyed man, but he's the best man in the world. Oh, there you go. After plundering the world dry, I am finally dying, and we're gonna be moving on to our next person, where phase two of the plan is. Are you sick? Oh my god, we've got the worst air in the world. F in the chat, alright? This man. This one-eyed bandit, alright? He shall be remembered. Pretty cool, though, is that our air, our new character, has actually got a lot of intrigue and has already gone down all the way to schema. So I think we're going to have a bit of a more intrigue guy than a man who sacks the Byzantine emperor. This guy is just going to plot to kill his own children. There you go, already trying to murder my half-brother so I can get back uh, the Faroe Islands. <laughs> I'm such a gracious human being. I yes, I shall live up to my father's great legacy by murdering my two-year-old half-brother. Uh, and oh, you can't do anything right. He actually got caught. So now we have Kinslayer and Murderer, but it doesn't really matter too much because we only have one vassal who we are way more powerful at. And we could probably just kill him too, really. I can raise a rune stone to honor my brother. <laughs> the, the brother that I murdered. <laughs> there we go, though. We got our first dwarf little wife. No pun intended. And uh, she's actually pregnant. Now, we need to make sure that we're actually going to get a heir that is going to be a dwarf. So, we can't, I'm not going to take any concubines or any lovers. So... Oh my god, my family absolutely hates me because I killed my two-year-old brother. Alright, the first one we got is a daughter and definitely not a dwarf, so we're just gonna name this one... Throw it in the trash. Oh my god. He just bled to death. Oh my god, you're the worst. You're literally the worst guy I've ever had. So, uh, yeah, now I'm playing as y'all throw it in the trash of Iceland. Is is there any dwarf husbandus that I could... Th there is one. He is 22 years old. If I marry him, should still be able to knock me up in like 16 years. So we'll just grab him for now. There you go. I'm going to raise a runestone for my, uh, my father, who unfortunately got a paper cut and bled to death. <laughs> that I'm going to probably throw that rune stone in the sea. Uh, I just got a pet cat. I'm gonna call it Bocon One. Oh, this uh, 
It's fan fiction's really starting to uh, heat up, isn't it? Oh, I was too busy uh, getting my army wiped over here in Ireland that I, I didn't realize that my dog had just ate Bo. My dog ate my cat. Oh, I got I got a new one. Just gonna call it <laughs> Pokemon 2. <laughs> here we go. We're of age. We've got ourselves our little dwarven husband, and hopefully we can get some damn kids. There's batter hoes up here. What is going on? Oh, well, we uh, already got a daughter, and we know where that left us last time, so we've got throw it in the trash. Two. And uh, not only is she not a dwarf, but she's already sick, and that had nothing to do with me. You know, I ain't too sure how I just got pregnant when I'm raiding Ragusa, but uh, don't worry, husband, who is apparently up here in Russia. Yeah, it's <laughs> there we go. Got an air. And he is the best thing in the world. Now, you may have noticed I have a lot of gold. And that's simply for the fact we are doing a very interesting strategy here of getting a whole bunch of intrigue. And we are going to start kidnapping people and making them turn to our religion. Uh, now, you see, while everyone is moving to Catholicism and Denmark is moving to Islam, uh, we really need to spread our great dwarven genes to everyone. But with our current religion, no one will actually marry us for the simple fact we're a different faith. So we're going to have to change that. I, uh, with you using all that money or you got from burning down the great Byzantine Empire, you may ask. Well, I'm, I'm trying to steal the six-year-old King of Wales. A noble cause. There you go. Got him. Now what we're going to do is negotiate release, demand his conversion, and easy as that. Uh, the Pope did just call for a crusade against England, though. And I'm not too sure what that means. Uh, but there you go. From the shadows, I will try my best to keep uh, England the correct religion so we can keep marrying over there. And uh, hopefully the Pope doesn't keep crusading for England. Actually, I got an idea. If the Pope's going to be busy invading England, that means that nobody's going to be guarding the Pope. There it might be. Just... Uh it's raiding the Pope. Yeah, I'm definitely not in the good books with the Catholics, <laughs> considering I'm enslaving the Pope. <laughs> what can I say? The Pope crusades England, I raid the Pope, so I have more money to kidnap six-year-old. Uh, so I noticed that the King of Wales is currently sterile and ill, so I'm also going to kidnap the primary heir, which is fine. We already have a 95% chance, and I didn't have to pay anyone. They just, just she's barren as well. What is wrong with whales? Yep, gotta to get myself a wee cuck and demand conversion and have fun in Wales, the, the land where no one can have children, apparently. There you go, so I haven't done much expanding. I've just taken this county off these guys over here, which wasn't too difficult because we're in there fairly busy with the Pope right now. And uh, we're gonna try and take some land in Norway because we can form the Kingdom of Norway, but uh, we don't really want to give up Iceland too much. Oh, and taking that one promise actually made me the culture head, which is very good. Oh, guys, popped out two twins, and neither of them are dwarves, so we're just gonna name them Cursed Child 1 and 2. That might be just a quick stop to the Bank of Italy. Yeah, also just uh, kidnap the French king right there. Don't mind if I do. So the only problem with kidnapping people, especially uh, with my religion, is that when we do convert them, uh, the bad thing is that kind of makes them explode when they die due to inheritance. Now, I don't know why Galicia's all over here for one, but I'm not questioning it. But also, I'm not helping the whole border gore situation. Uh, but there you go. Uh, they are now, uh, my religion. And, uh, they're gonna have fun with it. Have fun, Scotland. Just, uh, don't die. I've literally no idea what is going on. Why is Galicia, like, everywhere? And, like, Sweden is everywhere, too. They're all down in Spain. Everyone's just doing musical chairs over here. I don't know. I've just been a bit bored, so I've gone around just abducted people, you know, just got the King of France in here, you know, the Queen, <laughs> got, got a few kings in <laughs> So, uh, looks like our leader's about to die, High Chief Death Throat in the Trash, who actually turned out to be very good with 28 Intrigue in the end. She lived to 76 as well, so we got some good genes going on, but that's about to change with our new heir, the first of the Dwarf Kings. Uh, he's already... Already got the uh, the title the foolish, but he does have 27 Marshall. He is the dwarf warrior. Uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and try to form a kingdom now. Uh, I am doing it by invading Corsica. So that's one duchy right there. We just need one more, I think. There we go. We had 
We had a, two really good rulers in a row. Don't count the one that bled out from the paper cut, but now I think we're going to have the third ruler that's really going to be good. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Okay, whatever. We're going to roll with it. First act as Dwarf King. Crazy Dwarf King. We're raising Byzantium to the ground. Guy is literally mental. I'm already having to kill my uh, my nephew just so I re-inherit Corsica and this bit of Spain I took. Oh, I was just going to make my own kingdom, but apparently I can just make the kingdom of Sardinia, which will do. Uh, I think we're going to have to rename it, though. There you go. I don't want to call them dwarves, you know. Do they like that? Do you like being called? We'll, we'll stick with small people. Oh, I just realized when I raided Constantinople, uh, I stole the air. <laughs> the person... 500 gold or converting him hmm. oh my god I just got the plague look at my little plague face oh, I'm dead oh no never mind I survived for now no I'm definitely dying still as you look at oh, I'm I look cool but I'm gonna die I uh she kidnapped the Pope I don't know what I'm gonna do with him. Oh, when not in Rome. Oh, oh, another dwarf down, and now we've got King Dwarf, the King Jeruna son of small people. And uh, we really need to focus on actually reforming the religion now, because that's the one thing we have not done, and it's gonna require. Oh my god, it's gonna require so much piety. Okay, so the way I've looked at this is actually gonna be cheaper for me to convert to Catholicism than to wait for the extra thousand piety I need to reform our current religion, which means we will no longer be able to do any raiding, which, uh, before we do that, you know, just, uh, one last tour of the world, yeah, burn the place to the ground. Can't wait for the part in the history books where they have to keep writing about the dwarf that kept raiding them for 200 years. Oh, I know exactly why that has happened. Because I forced convert the Byzantines, so they're falling apart. Oh no! <laughs> oh well, guess, guess I'll raid a bit more of the land. All right, now before we go ahead and reform to Catholicism and then reform out of Catholicism, we are gonna have to deal with uh, our less than happy vassals. There you go. Only one person won't convert, and I'm I'm not that fussed about them. And now we are Catholic, which means raiding is done, and it's time to become a well, an actual nation, not just a island of dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that's so stupid. <laughs> All right, then we are going to reform Catholicism into our own dwarf religion, but we're going to still need a bit more piety. We want a whole bunch so we can do some fun stuff here. Oh, there you go, 875 piety just for uh, doing a pilgrimage, and that should be enough. So I haven't changed much from Catholicism up here, but down here a few things have changed. Uh, divorce is always allowed, uh, marriage type, polygamous, um, inbreeding, allowed deviancy accepted same sex you know everything like that we're not that interested in it's um just a few other stuff we've also got it so um if we get the right holy sites we can also become head of the faith so yeah we're just uh, setting the names and stuff so name small people objective dwarves uh single follow dwarfian many followers uh almost a full size human 420 Blaze it. Perfect religion. You want to sign up to my religion, guys? We, uh, we're really cool. The Great Dwarf Schism! <laughs> oh, I've actually... It should have been dwarves with a V-E-S, not a dwarfs. But, uh, you know what? I think that fits it even better, really. So, I guess there you go. We've created the Great Dwarf Lineage. Uh, we're, um, we're absolutely <laughs> very small. <laughs> like, every... All of my children are all small dwarf people. Uh, my wife is a dwarf. Uh, my vassals... Not all of them are dwarfs, but I am marrying into them. So, uh, <laughs> this guy is married to a dwarf. <laughs> His heir is a dwarf. <laughs> There's a lot of dwarfs going on. And also, we've we've created the religion of dwarfism. And uh, all our holy sites are just... They're, they're everywhere that we can't get to. But yeah, that was the kingdom of the dwarfs. Uh, actually, we should probably check um, what we look like on the main screen first. Oh my god. Oh, they're so small! <laughs> so, you know, just remember, every time I was pillaging Constantinople and Rome, 
it was these little fuckers running around with their swords. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, no harm, of course. It was just, uh, I'm just having fun in the terms of CK3. I have nothing against dwarves or small people, okay? Um... Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe button down below. And uh, more CK3 on the way, because boy is this a game that keeps on giving.